Welcome back there, children. It's time for Energy and Reactions Part 3. Yay! Uh, and you'll notice you've got the screen is tiny and the Patterson is big. But don't worry, that's not for very long. Uh, this part is just an introduction. Make sure that you have these notes. These are the notes that go with it. You are also going to need the graphing assignment. That's the uh, endothermic and exothermic plotting uh, graphs uh, with the graphs that you've already done before getting to this point. After you watch this video, then you'll be doing the conclusion questions for the hot and cold pack lab. Because as you noticed, uh, these graphs at the bottom of that lab are the graphs that we'll be doing in the notes today. Oh, that's exciting. So, uh, take your attention down to the little screen. Uh, today's topic on energy and reactions is all about how to have a better spark. So we've talked about how uh, every chemical reaction needs energy put into it, even those that end up uh, is releasing more energy to the environment, the exothermic reactions. They all need energy to start the reaction, and that's because we need to break those initial bonds. This video is about how to have that happen uh, more quickly, more efficiently, and more importantly, more betterly. So we're going to start off by talking about just how to how reactions work a little bit and how to uh, speed them up in general. So first thing you're actually going to do is watch this video, which should come up next in the playlist if Editing Patterson did his job. If not, you'll just click on it in the Google Classroom assignment. You're going to start at a uh, time code 13 seconds. That'll just skip the TED intro. And you're only going to watch till 136. When you hit 136, stop, and then you'll go back to the next part of this video with me standing over there uh, with the big screen. Yay. How fun. Yeah, go watch the video.